good morning all yes in the previous session we discussed about we are discussing about the er model there we have seen uh, the plenty of notations which are used in the er diagrams so there we have seen that uh, how to represent an entity type and how to represent an attribute how to represent uh, the different kinds of attributes right the different notations used for each kind of an attribute there we have seen that how to represent a comp uh, co composite attribute then derived attribute stored attribute key attribute right so all the things uh, we have seen and multi valued attribute and all then after that uh, we discussed about how to represent a relationship type that means we are using a, a diamond shaped symbol that we have seen then after that uh, we discussed about uh, Uh, weak entity type so what is meant by weak entity type an entity type which doesn't have any key attribute then such uh, entity type we called by name weak entity type and always uh, we'll make use of uh, uh, strong entity type key attribute which is connected with a weak entity type right through a relationship type uh, that can be used to identify the tuples of weak entity type that we have seen then after that uh, we discussed about uh, what is meant by identifying relationship type right so if any relationship type which connects a strong entity type with a weak entity type then such uh, relationship type that we are representing it with two concentric diamond shaped symbol right guys and that we called by name uh, identifying relationship type right and one more we have seen most of the time a weak entity type always having a total participation with a strong entity type or we can call it by name owner entity type right fine then after that uh, we entered into the uh, con uh, constraints part that we have seen what is meant by cardinality ratio and what all the different kinds of cardinality ratios we come across right so usually when we are drawing when we are going with designing any er diagram right so that we have seen there we have seen that uh, one to one one to many many to one and many to many so what exactly cardinality ratio indicates is so how many instance of an entity type connected with the how many instance of another entity type through a relationship type right so that we have uh, that will be represented with the help of cardinality ratios right so then after that uh, we have seen the uh, participation constraint so participation constraint always gives an information about whether all instances that means all entities of an entity type are participated or whether it is partially participated right so that information can be obtained with the help of participation constraint there we have seen that the two different kinds of participation constraints we are having one is total participation and second one is second one is the partial participation and total participation we are representing it with the two uh, solid lines right then uh, partial participation we are showing it with only a single solid line right so this is what we have seen that is what with respect to entity type and relationship type then guys in the today's session i am with a one more very interesting topic of this uh, er model that we called by name recursive relationship type the name itself is suggesting something recursive 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 relationship type means the same entity type participated more than once in a relationship type right recursively that means more than once it was uh, participated right in a relationship type then such kind of relationship type we called by name a recursive relationship type for example guys uh, let's assume we are having a set of employees where each employee is identified based on employee id having a name address phone number many other things let me write this employee here and i said the uh, employee having a key attribute like employee id let me underline because this what a notation we are using right so then he is having a employee having a name employee having a multiple phone number right have written let's assume let's assume guys an employee most of the organization we have seen that uh, there is an hierarchy and one more uh, uh, employees are supervised by uh, some employees and such employees we called by name supervisors actually even supervisors also an employee of the company right so during that time 
so employee supervises employee right one supervisor can supervise many employees like that we might have any many number of supervisors right so in a in an organization so during that time so i'll not go with writing a one more uh, employee table or we can call by name a supervisor entity type right so writing a employee entity type and as well as a supervisor entity type so though the supervisor or also belongs to the family of employee then there is no meaning in writing the same one more entity type for a supervisor right because supervisors also basically employees only right so for that what i'll do is here this em employee entity type contains supervisors and this itself contains the supervisees that means uh, non supervisors everything all employees right the bunch of employees employees set here we are having so instead of writing a one more entity type what else we can do is let's make the same entity type employee entity type to be participated more than once in a relationship type guys how you know so this what us notation will make use to represent a relationship type right so that have written here so what what is my intention is to show the a relationship between the employee and a supervisor right so an employee supervises a employee right so this what the thing the relation i want to represent here let me write supervise employee supervise employee so at this point of time one employee let's assume who supervises supervisor right let me write one supervisor supervises many employees or we can say one employee supervises supervise many employees right at this point of time this we call by name the role the role played by the employee at this point of time that we have to represent that we call by name role name guys no down role name always in a recursive relationship type look at this one guys same entity type participated more than once once with this end and second one again connected with to the same entity type right so always in the recursive relationship type it's mandatory to write the role played by that instance right let me write supervisor here supervisee or non supervisors non supervisor employees are listed here right so this what uh, this how we can sh uh, show that recursive relationship type that means same entity type participated more than once in a relationship type and even for this also we'll write a cordiality ratio and even participation constraint here i'll write what um, all uh, all are not supervisors because few of them are not connected and here all are not supervisors right so for that uh, Well, what I have written is uh, in both the end, I made it as a partial participation, right? So even we can write uh, the total and part partial participations here if required, depending upon the assumptions and the scenario, right? The requirement. Then after that, uh, uh, we'll write a cordiality. Then uh, as usual, represent connecting uh, entity type with the uh, relationship type. But this of what kind? Recursive relationship type because same entity type participated more than once in a relationship type. there is one more interesting thing what we can uh, observe here prior to that let me take up a one one more small example can we uh, make out a one more example uh, for a recursive relationship type most of the time we have seen that uh, 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 players of a cricket team right so there are many players so there uh, only one person we called by name a captain right so that captain player supervises or we can say the managers the other non captains that means other players of the team right so during that time when i say players manages player during that time one player that person becomes what a captain and on the end he, he become what uh, non captains that means non players let me write uh, one more small example let me write a player id player where player having a id let me write it by name player id is a key attribute and having a player having a name having a phone number something like this p name i have written that's it and player supervises a player a player manages player such kind of a relationship type i can create here so during the time uh, one player manages or supervises many player during the time so one this here the role played by the player is the captain role right 
captain i can write and here the non captains are even captain is also a player right but uh, there we are identifying the relationship between each instance there that's it non captains here we are having right simple players that's it player supervises a player manages other players that we can have this becomes what one more example uh, for a recursive relationship type like that you can uh, build your own example for this so one more uh, interesting thing uh, that i want to highlight here is most of the time have you seen guys uh, for all nta types we are represented it with a capitalized that means with a uh, upper case letters right and one more uh, even relationship type also were represented with a upper case letter this is what a standard notations to be used especially in designing an er diagram that we have to keep it in our mind guys and one more interesting thing uh, what we can identify here is most of the time for a entity type we are making use of nouns of er of uh, english grammar right so nouns will make use for uh, entity type and verbs we are making use for a relationship type right so guys uh, now i'll take you to the a uh, tour of uh, er diagram writing for a, a scenario let's we'll try to consider one big scenario and we'll try to design an er model for the problem statement as already i have mentioned designing of er diagram is the first step or we can say a primary step once after the requirement analysis right so in designing of a, any database schema right so let's guys uh, here i'm having uh, a problem statement let us will go through each and every problem sta statement and let's will go with uh, building an er diagram for uh, this uh, statement or we can say this statement we are converting into a diagram right we are picturizing this statements that's it the scenario let me take up what exactly it is consider an organization abc having many employees it's a a scenario uh, related to an organization where that organization having a uh, many employees and plenty of departments and there are many projects and employees are working in a department and the department contains many employees and one more uh, employee contains uh, uh, sorry department contains some managers and uh, each department can control few projects and employees are working uh, in some projects for some number of hours right uh, weekly that all we are representing and employee having a dependents right and dependents belongs to employee one employee can have any number of dependents so such kind of a scenario here we are having let's we'll go with uh, each and every line reading and let's we'll try to convert it into an er model guys now what i have given is a brief picture about the whole uh, er uh, whole scenario so let's go, we'll go with one by one statement by statement consider an organization abc having many employees an employee works for one department each employee identified using emp id having a name address described as house number city district state and pin code and more than one phone numbers look at this one guys by seeing this statement the first five lines we come to know that uh, we can identify two entity types here one is an employee because they have given employee is identifying by using a emp id and all so based on this definitely we can identify we can predict an employee becomes an entity type in the scenario let me write employee and let's we'll try to uh, pick the attributes from the scenario from this list so which are all connected to this employee entity type look at this one guys this giving some hint each employee identified by using emp id having a name and all let me write all such things employee id each employee identified by using employee id it's an indication that this i want to make it as what a key attribute then after what 
employee having a name, let me write it as e name. Then after that, we are having what? House number, then after address. And address is further described like this. It's an indication that that address becomes what? A composite attribute, right? Let me write address. What are the components, simple components of this address? House number, city, district, state, and pin code. Let me write. House number, city, then after that, state, then the pin code, all these things. Then and more than one phone numbers, each employee can have multiple phone numbers. It's an indication that phone number is an attribute, but what kind of attribute it is? It is a multi-valid attribute. Why? For each instance, for each employee instance, an employee can have multiple phone numbers. He might write multiple values, right? For a phone number column. So for that, let's will make this phone number as a multi-valued attribute. For the notation to be used for a multi-valued attribute, two concentric oval shaped symbols that have written here, right? Fine. Next. After this, uh, let me move on to a, a next line. Department identified by using department number, having a D name, that means department name, and department having many, and uh, department location, right? So this indicates that uh, we need to write a one more entry type in the name called department. Let me write, guys. So now we'll go with identifying the attributes of department. What all? Having a department number, having a name, location, and all. Department number. So each department is identified based on department number. Look at the statement, right? It's an indication that D number becomes what? The key attribute of this department entity type. So let me go with identifying the further attributes, department name, then after this, department location. Fine. Then after this, each department, we'll proceed for the next few statements, each department having a manager and each department having many employees. Look at this one, department having a manager. Basically, manager is also what guys? An employee. So for the department having a manager and manager is an employee. So for that, let me build one relationship between this department and the employee, you know, because this employee set contains managers and non-managers, everything. So for that, uh, what they're asking is they're not asking us to represent the manager manages employee. Instead of that, they're asking us to represent a department is managed by the employee, that relationship type that we want to uh, represent here. So at this point of time, what we'll do is, we'll go with building one relationship type between this employee and the department. So what is that? Department manages employee. So name of the relationship, we'll give it as managers. One department, what they have given is each department having a manager, each department each each department having a manager having a manager that means one so for that it becomes what one to one and all departments having a manager you know so for that i'll write the total participation here but here i'll write the partial because all employees are not managers but all departments having a manager so for that i'll write total participation here and partial participation here right so that's it Next, we'll move on to our next statement. Each department having many employees, right? And one more, the other half of the statement chunk is present here. An employee works for one department. Look at this one. The half is present. The, the relationship between the department employee, it is all about uh, this manager's relationship type talks about the manager of the 
employee said with the department uh, entities but uh, this half these statements an employee works for one department and a department having each department having many employees these statements gives us a hint about building of necessity of a one more relationship type between the employee and the department guys what is that employee works for one department and a department having many employees so that let me go with writing a one more relationship type between the employee and the department guys this relationship type talks about the managers of the employee set with the department and now this relationship type gives an information related to employee works for the department one employee works on what they what they said an employee works for one department one employee works for one department let me write fine next each department each department having many employees each department having many employees so one to n so instead of writing one here what i can write is n because this n contains even one also so many employees works for one department and one department work can contains many employees right and all employees belongs to any one of the department you know so that i'll write a total participation suppose if our assumption is if any employee if it is percent then definitely if he belongs to any one of the department if this kind of a assumption if i'm having then we'll write a total participation that means two solid lines here uh, between this works for right fine suppose uh, let's assume few departments newly started but uh, no employees were recruited we are having such departments also let's if suppose if our assumption is like this then it becomes what a partial participation if not if all departments having employees then at this point uh, then during that time we'll write a total participation even with a department also from the department also let me move on to our next few lines there are many projects each project is controlled by the department what they are saying there are many projects each project is controlled by is controlled by the department and each project is uniquely identified by using project number having a project name and a project location it's an indication that uh, we need to go with creating a one more entity type in the name of what project guys let me go with writing project let's will go with identifying the attributes of this project what all guys project each project uniquely uniquely identified by using what project number let me write project number so uniquely identified means what we need to make this as a key attribute next project having a name and having a location let me write location project location let me go to the the first half each project is controlled by what department so between department and a project they are asking us to build one relationship type let me go with writing a one diamond shaped symbol that means a relationship type between the department and a project what they are saying there are many projects each project each project is controlled by a department each project is controlled by a department let me write so project department controls always one more interesting thing never forget so for a space purpose we can do but uh, most of the time always a year diagrams can be read this is one more standard always an year diagram to be read from left to right and from top to bottom right so department controls a project one department controls one project each project is controlled by the department let me move on to our next statement because uh, we are having a one more part here and uh, a department can can have can control many project a department can control many project but a project is controlled by only one department one department can control many project and a project is always controlled by any one department one to one from one end 
and one to many from the other end. One department can control many projects and a project is controlled by only one department that we are representing it here. Let's assume, suppose if our assumption is like this, most of the time that will be given in the scenario. Suppose if every project is controlled by any one of the department, then during the time we have to write a total participation between the project to the controls. Suppose if few departments they have not involved, they are not involved in taking up a project, in controlling of a project, during the time the department participation becomes what? A partial guys. That's it. Next. Let me move on to our next statement. An employee works on many projects. An employee works on many projects. Number of hours per week worked on each project by an employee also needs to be recorded in the database. What they are looking? They are asking us to build a relationship between the employee and a project. The employee works on project. Let me write. This is works for and this one is works on. Always all relationship type to be named with uniquely. Employee works on project. An employee works on many projects. An employee, one employee works on what? Many project. Let me write one to many. Fine. Next. Number of hours per week worked on each project by an employee also needs to be recorded in the database. They are asking us to represent the number of hours per week worked by an employee, that information, that also they want to record. It's an indication that they are looking for an employee ID, an employee works on which project, how many hours per week, that they want to record guys, that information. And let's move on to the next statement because to write it, this statement plays a major role. A project is worked by many employees. Look at this one. In the first half they said, an employee works for works on many projects and a project, now they are saying a project, a project is controlled by many employees. One project controlled by many employees. From one end, one to many and from this end, it is one to many. So for thus, this can be replaced with what? Many to many, right? M to N, M N, right? Fine. All employees may not be working on a project and all projects Let's assume few projects uh, where uh, no employees were uh, recruited, right? So for that, no employees are working. During the time, such new projects, during the time that becomes what? Partial participation. This is all what our assumption. Suppose if they have given every project is worked by any employee, then during at least one employee, during the time we'll write a total participation, right? right? So let me go with adding this number of hours per week because none of the attributes here we are having either to either in the employee or in a project doesn't gives any information related to that number of hours worked by an employee on any of the project where to write especially during this many to many this work zone relationship types when we convert when we map this year diagram into a database schema during the time this work zone kind of a, a new table will be created and the attributes of the table are uh, key attributes of this participating entity types that means employee entity type key attribute employee ID and a key attribute of project that is project number along with that one more attribute we want to represent because each em that employee employee one works on project number 10 how many hours that I want to represent so for that I said works on kind of a one more uh, table will be created so for that I'll record this number of hours in the relationship type. Never forget guys, even not only for an entity type, even for relationship type also, we can write attributes. Look at this one. This is what one such uh, beautiful example here we are having, scenario here we are having, where uh, instance, in, in this instance, we have represented that number of hours kind of an attribute as an attribute for a relationship type, right? We can add it. Where our year design, year model permits us to write like this, this kind of uh, things. Next, let me move on to our next statement. This is all over. Next, each employee is supervised by the supervisor. Each employee is supervised by the supervisor. Look at this one. Last few minutes back we discussed. What is that? 
employee set even supervisor is also an employee right so this employee set contains a manager supervisor and other employees of that organization right so now they are asking each employee supervised by the supervisor employee having many dependents so let me let me go with representing this employee supervises the supervised by the supervisor and supervisor is an on is also an employee so th this requires what guys a relationship type between what employee with employee itself right so let me go with adding so there's a space constraint let me write here employee supervises employee one employee supervises many employees now role name i want to write it here let me write employee supervisor one side i want to write what it is a supervisor role role played by that instance here what a non supervisor so supervisee you can write always you have to write it here guys fine next each employee next statement will move employee having many dependents dependents having the dependent name gender age address dependents are identified by employee id it's an indication that look at this one they, they never said a statement they have not given a statement here a dependents are identified by using a dependent name or a dependent id instead they are saying what dependents are identified by employee id it is an indication that dependent having a entity type kind of dependent kind of an entity type they are asking us to create but the dependent entity type doesn't have uh, its own key attribute instead they are saying it requires an employee id to identify where that employee id is a key attribute in the employee entity type right so for that it's an indication that go for creating a dependent entity type but the dependent entity type doesn't have any key attributes its own key attributes where it requires a dependent uh, sorry employee entity type key attribute that is empid to identify each instance of a dependent entity type right so what it indicates a dependent kind of an entity type but what kind of entity type it is it is a weak entity type why it doesn't have any key attribute so let me go with representing dependent then what are all the attributes of dependent dependent having what dependent name gender age address let me write those things dependent name dependent age then address next definitely few of my friends having a question like this sir address you have not made it here as a, a composite kind but here they have not given directly address that's it they have not given the component simple component components of address so whether directly have represented it as a simple attribute that's it if it is given then you can write it possible next what they said each employee employee having many dependents employee right so now i want to build a relationship type between the employee and dependents let me write employee having employee having dependents one employee having many dependents and a dependent belongs to any one of the employee since they have they said what dependents are identified by emp id it's an indication that it doesn't have any key attribute so for that it becomes what we can take type how to represent it is with what two concentric rectangular shaped symbols next once if i write like this then this becomes what identifying relationship type always a weak entity type having a total participation with a strong entity type so that two total lines because every dependent connected with any one of the employee that's it I have represented with what two diamond shaped symbol because weak entity type connected to a strong entity type one or entity type so that this relationship type becomes what identifying relationship type that's it is there any left out statement no guys so we have considered almost all statements now we have represented the whole scenario we have converted the statements english like statements 
into a IR model diagram, right? So that's it, guys. Thank you. Thanks for your patience listening.